The Ethernet Modbus TCP connection is a physical CAD5 or CAD6 cable with RJ45 connectors. A static IP address must be set for the client as well as all of the servers. In Modbus, Ethernet communication like Modbus TCP, the controller sending the command is called the client. The server is the controller that will respond to the commands from the client. In Modbus RTU or serial, the client is referred to as the master and the server is the slave. An easy way to remember this is the two S's. Server, slave. We can start the Click PLC programming software twice and connect to the client and server PLCs. Using the main menu, select Setup, COM port. Select port 1. This is the Ethernet RJ45 port on the Click CPU. This is where we will set up the static IP address of the port on the client and the server. This IP address is used to determine where the message will be directed. TCP IP refers to the transmission, control protocol, and internet protocol, which provides the transmission media for Modbus TCP messaging. This is the worldwide standard that is used for the World Wide Web or WWW. The primary function of TCP is to ensure that all the packets of data are received correctly, while IP makes sure that the messages are correctly addressed and routed. TCP IP is the transport protocol and does not determine what the, the data means or how the data is to be interpreted. Modbus TCP protocol will be the, da will be the data and each click PLC will interpret this information. This is how information will be transferred between the two click PLCs using Ethernet. The client click PLC, we use address 192.168.1.230 and the server click PLC will use address 192.168.1.231. Select OK to return to the port selection, then hit OK again to return to the main menu. Under the COM port, selection in the setup menu, select Modbus TCP. This Modbus TCP setup window will allow us to set parameters around the protocol. Enable the Modbus TCP server on the Click Remote IO PLC. Our Click PLC network ports are now set up. As mentioned, all communications are initiated from the client PLC using the Modbus protocol. We will now look at the ladder logic program for the Click PLC Client Master. Our main logic program will call a subroutine called Click PLC Ethernet Com. The subroutine will handle all the communications between the Click controllers. The first two lines on the controller will use the send instruction to write information into the server unit. You will see that IP is set for 192.168.1.231. This unique address will ensure the message to get to the server on the network. Double click on the set instruction. We can look at more details. The Modbus function code set is 15. This is used to write multiple coils. Our address type is set for Modbus 984 addressing and the starting slave address is 16.585. The starting client address is C201. Call up the address picker from the main menu program. Select display Modbus address at the bottom right hand side of the address picker window. This will display the Modbus addresses for all the memory locations in the Click PLC. 16585 is the address for C201. Looking back at the send instruction we are sending 50 bits this means that bits C201 to C250 from the client PLC are being sent to bits C201 to C250 of the server PLC. Status flags are set for the send instruction. We will use these for the timing of the communication. The first scan is used on the first rung to send the first 50 bits. The output flags on the first send instruction will trigger the second send instruction. Our next send instruction will be used to write multiple registers. The starting slave address will be 400201, which is DS201 in the Click PLC. We will write 50 addresses, registers DS201 to DS250, 
from the client PLC that will be written to DS201, the DS250 of the server PLC. The flags from the second send instruction will all trigger the receive instruction. The receive instruction function code will read coil status. We will read 50 bits starting at 16635 address C251 of the server PLC and write them to the client starting at C251. The output flags of this receive instruction will trigger the next receive instruction. We have two send and two receive instructions that will allow us to pass 100 bits and words between the two click PLCs. We will read 50 registers starting at 400251, address DS251 of the server PLC, and write them to the client starting at DS251. The output flags of this instruction will then trigger the first send instruction again. The sending and receiving instruction cycle uses the flag bits. If the cycle stops, we need to determine this and start the cycling again. The leading edge of the last receive instruction triggers an internal bit. The normally closed of this bit will then start a timer set for a thousand milliseconds or one second. The leading edge of this timer bit will then be on the first line under the first scan in parallel. We will now ensure that the information will continue to be updated. A heartbeat is sent to the first bit we write to the click server PLC. This is used to tell the server if communication is still active. Even though we are cycling above with our commands, it may not mean that the information is being sent. There could be errors on the line and the server PLC will need to know this and react. The click client PLC will also need to know if the information is valid. We are looking at the leading edge of each of the ethernet error communication bits. This will trigger an internal bit. The normally close of this bit will then turn on a timer. The timer is set for 500 milliseconds. If the timer done bit is on, then communications are okay. We can use this in other areas of our program. Returning to the main ladder logic of our client, click client PLC, we will implement some code to determine the throughput of our communications. When input X001 from our push button switch is on, this will turn on bit C201 and start a timer. Our remote click server will have the following code. This will read C201 and then set C251. When bit C251 is read from the click client PLC, the value in the timer is then copied to DS2 and DS2 will then contain the throughput value in milliseconds. The click server PLC does not need any code for communication to the client other than a heartbeat to ensure the transmission is valid. This is an asynchronous communication from the client. The heartbeat pulse comes from the client bit C201. Using the leading edge of this bit to turn on an internal bit, we use the normally closed internal bit as a condition for the timer. If the timer times out and the timer done bit comes on, we know communications have been lost. Call up the data view under monitor in the program tab of the navigation window on both the client and the server PLC click controllers. The client will write the first block of bits. You can see the heartbeat bit pulsing. The server will then write the next block of bits to the clients can read. The following two blocks contain registers, one for the client to write and one for the server to write. Changing the bit or word status in one controller will reflect in the other. You can download the program and documentation from the link below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.